everyone, my name is Puku and I am from Sikkim and I really want to get out of this car because I don't want to make a mess in my owner's lap. All these roads in Sikkim are so up and down and up and down and I am happy because I met two Romanian people, Gigi and Michael, who really want to go to the Romtek Monastery here in Sikkim. So let's go and explore! Thank you Puku for the nice introduction. So, as Puku told you already, we are on the way to the Rumtek Monastery, which is one of the oldest monasteries here in Sikkim. And if I remember correctly, it was built in the 1800s. From what I can tell you right now is that we have to climb a small stretch up towards the monastery. And there was also a checkpoint, military checkpoint from the main road they check your permits and your passports here unfortunately we didn't have a permit with us because we left at the hotel who knows that you have to bring a permit with you to the monastery but nevertheless the guy was super nice and i remembered my permit number so he said okay go up no problem so now we're going up towards the monastery This place reminds me a little bit of Shigate or Gante in Tibet uh, and it is built exactly like those villages there in the mountains in Tibet. Yeah, like one of the monasteries over there. Exactly. Let me just show you why I say that. Because we have this amazing view, incredible view. Gorgeous, beautiful place. This is the Rumtek Monastery, and uh, as soon as you will go inside, you will see a pillar which uh, um, basically contains the whole history of this place, of how this uh, area came into the possession of the owners, and uh, how this monastery was built and uh, people actually use this like in a very traditional way in a very lucky i don't know fate kind of mood um, they find coins and they try to throw the coins to reach the top of the roof of the little pillar inside the, the courtyard and they the hindu people here believe it's gonna bring good luck but actually the pillar is for uh, contains like the traditional the historical information of, uh, of this place of the monastery and the surrounding areas and as soon as you will go inside uh, the courtyard you will see uh, like the big monastery in front of you and you will go inside the monastery inside the monastery you will see all over the world 1000 uh, Buddha statues actually brought some brought from Tibet and some built here made here um, these were put there because the 16th Karmapa, the person who built this monastery actually believes the, in the fact that there are gonna be 1000 Buddhas coming into this world and uh, there are a representation for all of the Buddhas who are gonna come into this world. So everyone who will come here and pray will be blessed by 1000 Buddhas at once. So we uh, got the people here we caught them doing uh, all sorts of um, clay models for the upcoming puja and it's very beautiful and it's very beautifully made out of clay and it's very fine details very nice so pretty and this is nichar cake yes. nichar cake for the puja mm -hmm. and what are you making there same? Yes. It's beautiful. A little bit of information about this place. So this place is called Rumtek Monastery and it was built by the 16th Karmapa of Tibet. Which uh, if you remember when we went to the 
Institute of Tibetology in Gangtok, we learned that there are 16 uh, disciples of Buddha. So the 16th, Karmapa, also the disciple, he came into Sikkim after the war with China in 59 and he started building this whole complex. This complex consists of the uh, school behind me where you learn about philosophy, about English, about uh, Tibetan language and about basically about the world and the teachings of Buddha and you have to study here for nine years to become a enlightened monk so that you can go and preach forward the teachings of Buddha and around this complex there's also the monastery where the main monastery where the people are praying and um, the 16 Karmapa he built all of this and people started coming here and started learning and started uh, preaching and started praying towards the, the Buddha and in 1991 he died after that he was his remains were buried inside of the golden stupa which is inside the building in front of us um, unfortunately you cannot go film inside there because basically this is a burial place and this is a holy place because he died, he had to have a follower. And now there's a big discussion over who should be the 17th Karmapa, who should be the following Karmapa. Some people are supporting one person, some people are supporting another person. And because of this, a lot of tension has been created and, uh, well, that's why the army is around here, to protect and to offer security, at least this is what they say, to offer security in case some outbreak happens but uh, i don't know personally i don't think that uh, these people are uh, vengeful people and fightful people as you know the buddhists mostly are relaxed and calm people and they like to meditate they like to contemplate on the meaning of life and i don't know be more zen and more relaxed in a way and they're not seeking for fights so like those puppies over there like those puppies behind me yes exactly <laughs> So I don't know why there's all this tension and all this uh, army and all this here involved. But nevertheless, they are cooperating and they are nice to the uh, tourists who come and visit this place. So at least it's a plus. Kambopa transport like a gave all instructions to Tisung Kemba. From Tisung Kemba to Kamo Pakshi. Pakshi is Rangjung. You know, one, two, three. three so the, the second Kamapa was very powerful because Pakshi, he made the Mon like a Mongol king, Genghis Khan, mm -hmm. Kumle Khan. You know? Yeah. So Genghis Khan gave a lot of punishment to the second Kamapa for his beard to hang on. So he did his best to, you know, like a torture him. But it doesn't, you know, like a war. And the Mongol, yeah, like uh, Genghis Khan himself, very guilty you see, because Kamapa is something very different. Okay. So from there, this head is actually invisible since uh, until the fifth Kamapa, Jason Shekpa. So the fifth Kamapa was very popular in China. At that time, like a Ming Dynasty was there in China. Mm -hmm. So Ming Dynasty invited the fifth Kamapa, five Kamapa, Jason Shekpa to China to get some empowerment. So at that time, between the Ming Dynasty and Kama Pakshi, they personally have some auditions. So that suddenly, this Ming Dynasty saw this beautiful black head on his feet come up ahead. And he said, that, oh my God, you are the one. What a beautiful, you know, the head you have got. And black, sad, Vajra. And the middle one's a moon, sun. This is something very beautiful here. And Kama was very shocked. And you are the one who was very fortunate. Otherwise, this one is invisible. No one can see it very easily. You know, without very deep connections with me. Mm -hmm. 
So the Ming dynasty wasn't very selfish. He was a very good man. And he decided that I saw this. I'm the lucky. But in future, not everyone can see this. Exactly. But for them, I want to make one copy. If you give me the permission. And Kamapa said this is something very good, very positive thought. He just he can make it. And it's Ming Dynasty. He made this black hat, this example. Okay. So we have only that example here. Okay. In reality, the black hat is actually invisible. Yeah, I nobody knows who is. I told you the, the practice called the like the four season guru yoga. Yes. Who can do this practice day and night? Only you know like this this kind of practitioners can see the this black hat. Unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end. So now we have to go down from this place, even though this place is amazing. You feel very, I don't know, I felt very differently when I came here. More peaceful and more calm and more relaxed. And somehow we ended up here staying for four hours. And these four hours, they went like poof away. My initial plan was to come here and maybe spend half an hour or one hour to take a look around this place and show you this video and film for you. But somehow we ended up staying uh, for four hours. And I even talked with some of the people around here. So it was a very nice uh, and enlightened experience, I would say. And now, unfortunately, as I said, good things come to an end and we have to go back to Gangtok. So, thank you for watching our video. I hope this was informative for you. Uh, this is a different type of video than the one that we did before because it focuses only on one specific place. But I hope you liked it and who knows, if you click like, share and subscribe, maybe we can do something like this before again. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Wonderful evening to you guys. Bye. Bye.